The minimum level for a manager within that business is level three or equivalent. Richard, um, we've known each other for a long time now. It might be 30, 35 years. And I remember when we both started as environmental health officers, one of the things on our agenda was that we wanted to see the food system licensed, much in the same way that you might have with alcohol, you have to have licensed premises. So it would set standards and it would mean that you could almost fund the enforcement from that money that you, you get. Your view on licensing then, Richard, 35 years on, have your views changed? No, Sterling, I think even more important, when I still see some of the prosecutions that hit the headlines, hit the newspaper, when we see how many premises under the food hygiene um, rating scheme are at a zero, I'm thinking, how can we allow people who have no knowledge and no commitment to food safety to operate a food business in such poor conditions and expose customers to risk of food poisoning and worse. So I think licensing, many countries use licensing, and I think it would be a big factor in improving food safety standards. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, Richard. This isn't cutting edge legislation, isn't it? It's common practice in many, many countries. For me, I think it means that you get to the food business operator before he starts. And I think that's the most important conversation, the first one is that if somebody's obliged to actually tell you they're starting up a food business and they need a license before they can, it gives the enforcement officer an opportunity to make sure we're starting off from a safe base. Rather than the current system in the UK, which is simply registration, isn't it? And you've got exactly. uh, 28 days uh, to register your business. And that doesn't necessarily prompt a visit from the local environmental health officer who might be very busy. So it does seem to us saying, that you can't go into business until you get it right. Is that yep. your view? That's my view. And, and, and Sterling, what do you think should be included in the as a prerequisite for licensing? What would you like to see included? Well, I think the base standard is compliance. So what the legislation has now is a great first step. Um, maybe there should be something about the person in control, the competency of the food business operator, I always think is almost the most important thing that we have as a foundation. And maybe if I was to say, well, you've got to meet the legislation, that's a base standard, that's not doing anything special. Maybe if you're going to improve the license system, it's almost like a fitness to, to trade, that the person who's actually trading can demonstrate a fitness, you know, that they're trained and that they're competent. Maybe that might be one of the extras I put in, but hey, if we just got licensing for compliance, that's a great start. And I think also that um, one of the problems we have is local authorities are strapped for cash, as we keep saying, and maybe the licensing scheme, if that money was ring-fenced, could actually help to pay for the cost of audit. So if, if uh, finance is a reason why these uh, inspections aren't being carried out, it could almost be a self-finance system much in the way that we pay for our MOTs, isn't it? Or we pay for our driving licenses. That money actually keeps the system going. Your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think, as you said, minimum compliance. Uh, but I also think, not necessarily the owner, and I think that's the big weakness. We talk about the person responsible by law. It doesn't necessarily, i.e. the owner, have to be the one that is trained but if they're not trained, then they have to have a manager who is trained. And I honestly believe that if it's a high risk food business, the minimum level for a manager within that business is level three or equivalent. If we can come up with a system, but it's level three, it's not level two. Level two is for high risk food handlers. But we need a manager in there who can be responsible for implementing safer food, better business or a HACCP system, can be responsible for making sure that all the food handlers implement what they've been taught at level two. And that's the other thing. I think the food handlers should all be trained to level two or equivalent prior to the business opening. I can't see that we should allow a business to open and nobody's trained in food safety. I mean, if a, if a plumber came around to your house, Sterling, and uh, 
to, to, to mend the leak in, in the wash hand basin. And he said, well, I've had no training. And I, don't, I don't even know what a wash hand basin is. I don't think you'd be very keen on letting him come in and to try and repair the wash hand basin. So basically, it's the same with food handling as far as I'm concerned. They've got to be able to demonstrate a competence in their job as the legislation says, not asking for anything else, they've got to demonstrate the competency to be able to produce safe food. And I think we can use the same legislation to have a requirement for a level three for a manager employed within that business who should always be available. So if it's a big business with lots of staff, they might need two or three people trained up to level three. That's I feel very strongly about that. Yes, uh, but to be honest with you, if we're talking about licensing, Richard, I would just like a license system. I just would like to see basic compliance as a, as a must with a clear food business operator who's responsible. Uh, and it does give the uh, regulators the opportunity to get greater visibility of what's happening in their area, which I think is essential. And as you say, you don't have um, uh, some amateur starting up a food business in a dangerous way. Then maybe the EHP picking it up later on on one of their inspections. Yeah. I think it's a great way of saying, well, let's get the start right and then we can take it from there. Well, so yes, you and I think. Licensing? Sorry? You think we'll actually have food licensing? I mean, it has been 30 years. I think we had this conversation about once a month. Yeah. Uh, do you actually I think it will happen in our lifetime? Unfortunately, I don't think the Food Standards Agency has got an appetite for it. We've There's lots of people being calling for it and asking for it. It's never happened. Maybe if there's several more major incidents occurred, um, perhaps. But I think the other thing about licensing, and, and on the compliance side and on the training side, I honestly believe it would save businesses money. Stop them wasting money and doing the wrong things. They could get advice on what they needed to do uh, and do it properly. They could, uh, they, they need to be able to, for instance, you have to have cleaning companies that are coming around selling you, there's, uh, selling you cleaning chemicals, pest control companies, there's equipment manufacturers. How have you got the knowledge within the business to determine which one is providing you value for money unless you've got some experience and training? So, again, I think there's a positive side to this. It's not just about charging somebody with no benefits. Not only is the benefits in the compliance, which is what we both want, but also they may make better choices with regard to their own purchasing. Yeah, and I think it's a great first conversation, I think, with an enforcement officer. Certainly, if I was opening up a business and I've moved to an area where I've taken up a new job in a food factory, the first people I phone up are the uh, local authorities. So, why come down and have a look and let's see what your view of the place is. So, it's a great relationship builder. I suppose some people are reticent that in the wake of COVID, there's not much money in the hospitality sector. It's really really tough out there and maybe some people say well it's just another cost when we're you know struggling to make money uh, and maybe now is not the appropriate time to do it do you think there's a cost element to this well there might be um but coincidentally sterling where we're just highfield is just opening opening up a coffee social which is going to be basically a very large cafe with 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 a high risk men, menu as some cafes do and I can assure you our manager has, um, was required to sit the level four, not the level three, the level food safety and pass with distinction, I may add. So it's about I'm committed to it. We're committed to it as a company. I think it's important not just to talk about it, but obviously be committed to it. Thank you, Richard. Uh and thank you for, you for viewing. And if you want some more information or you want to ask some further questions, you can just simply go to the LinkedIn site that we have, a food safety site for Highfield, and we'll try our very best to answer your questions there. Thank you.